Welcome back lads and lasses. So we're going to start with the wiring right now. I just have to remove a couple of things and we'll see how much of the wiring we need to take out to be able to sleeve and install it back. I'm also going to add sensors and you'll see that in the video. Okay, so throughout this video there are going to be timestamps so feel free to use them. I just dropped the bolt right into that hole right there. Can't even see it. Right below the housing, it's, it goes straight into the bell housing. And I can't reach it out from the bottom. Since doing the wires last, I just cable tie them up on the back right over here. The camera's probably struggling to focus. Now, as you can see, there's quite a little bit of a nest right here. It's just because I left extra length wires and tied them together. It seems like they came loose a little bit. And as you can see right here, I don't have a plug on this, so it's just the pins that I and I just push them in right there. Not a good idea, but it worked. And I've been driving for a very long time like that. <clears throat> I wouldn't recommend doing it again. But there was no other place to get plugs. So look, I put some sleeving over these wires already. These are the TPS and the air intake temperature sensor. I have a couple of wires tied in. Oh man. Yeah, I have the wires tied with the cable tie right there. So I'm just going to try and remove all this. Put some sleeving over it and hope that works and that the sleeving is the right size I might change the whole um, location just because I need to use the current hole for its intended purpose of draining water out of the out of the skull right here out of the section so I need to remove this intercooler piping just to make it a lot easier probably going to remove the battery as well and yeah let's do that So these are the plugs that I got. I looked them up according to the Volkswagen part number and then I just looked it up on AliExpress according to that part number that I got online. I just identified them according to uh, the layout of the plug, the number of pins and keys, the key grooves. As you can see right here, this one has two on this side, none on this side, this one has two on this side and one at the bottom. So. Yeah, that's how I identified them, and I just got them off of AliExpress. They come with their little, with their little seals and with the crimp metal piece that goes in here. The other thing I got is a map sensor. So these are two speed sensors, vehicle speed sensor and crank sensor, so and cam sensor. And so I also got a map plug. This is a Toyota 2JZ map plug. I like saying 2JZ, makes my car feel real legit so this is my map sensor i did a whole video on my map sensor and how to use any map sensor in your car so if you want to check out the video you can and this is my map sensor it basically looks just like the 2jz map sensor as you can see right there so i just looked up the pin up for this according to the 2jz since the yota likes reusing uh, their parts so this is a Toyota hilux map sensor and it's rated up to 1.7 bars at 4.7 volts so 5 volts is obviously the maximum but you want to keep it safe so at um, 1.7 bars you would get a 4.7 volts which is still safe so you can see the plug i looked it up and it fits right on there according to the 2jz i'm just going to use this pin out i found for the 2jz pressure sensor so this would be the sensor end so this would be that exact plug and I just have to pin them in 
push them in here these plugs look quite fine quite sturdy the plastic is quite rigid flexible has a little clip on here as well so works quite well and the pins look good and even has the little Toyota pin lock so I'm gonna crimp on these new wires onto my old oh yeah this is, my, this is what I previously used so it's just two pin plug that I shaved off on one side and this was my ground pin which I just well I deepened it from another plug like this and just pushed it on the sensor so we'll get rid of all that jankiness and now we're gonna go original official uh, official wiring of the sleeving and the crimped on ends So when initially wiring up the car, I was quite um, concerned as to where I would get good uh, crank wire, a wire that I can run to my crank for good crank signal. So what I thought I had to do is order something online again and wait many months for it to arrive, but I found a better solution and that's this wire that I'm crimping or that I'm stripping right now. This specific wire was used on a guitar and as you can see, you need shielded wiring for your crank or cam signal as well as your speed sensor so as you can see with this wire it has a copper around it to protect it from magnetic inductance and in the center it has a wire that's also insulated and that would be your signal wire so i found this quite useful and it has worked with a low trigger filtration on the speed we know so I'm aware that it, there is a better crank signal uh, wire that is better shielded. The proper shielded wiring has a little bit of foil while this only has the wire strands around it. So that does make this a little more susceptible to induction, to dodgy signal. And But I do have an experience with this and it's worked for me since I'm not running it close to any coil wires or higher current drawing magnetic fields it's actually quite close to the starter but the starter only works or only functions for a short duration so it doesn't really cause any dodgy signal for me all right so this is a mark 3 vehicle speed sensor the mark 2s and mark 1s have the uh, cable speed sensor which runs through the cluster it has a little gear that slips on here in the retaining clip so i'm gonna throw this out and I'm going to use this so I can send the speed to the ECU for better boost management. So as you can see, previously I had a white gear on that cable, but on this time I'm using a red gear and I've already installed this and drove the car around and the red gear has less teeth. So you're actually supposed to use a red gear with the 3.6 and the 3.62 and 3.64 I believe. They're very close, it's in the 3.6s. They use these 15 uh, teeth gears, while the 3.9 final drive, the newer um, code for transmissions use a different gear. They use a white gear. So that's another thing. So, okay, so this was in my car and now I just have to figure out which pin runs to which uh, terminal on here. So right now, this is the exact same plug that's used on the crank sensor. So I'm just going to use follow that convention and plug them in in that order and see how it works. The side would be positive, middle would be signal, the side would be negative. This I'm sure I'm pretty sure this is a 12 volt sensor, but so is the crank sensor. So I'm using 5 volts in the crank sensor and it's working fine. So I'm pretty sure that 5 volts will work on this sensor just as well. I also have to use a shielded wire for the middle pin just so I get a stable speed output. I'm just running it off a of 5 volts and it's a Hull effect sensor. You can use any Hull effect sensor directly connected to the Speedwino. So you're just going to connect them in a certain way. Okay, so for setting it up in Tuner Studios, you're going to VSS and gear detection. So you just follow this whole procedure. We did this in the car while driving and I just used the RPM gauge over here as we were driving to calibrate all of these. 
the first one is just calibrated at 60 kilometers per hour I use the GPS to get as close as possible can't really use anything else there so that's what I used and the gear detection we just used 1000 rpm as it states right here drove 1000 rpm in each gear press set per gear I will have five gears so we end up the fifth gear and that's all set up okay and for the pins for VSS pin we set it on pin 21 you could use the following you could use pin 2 pin 3 or pin 20 and 21 so any of those four pins will work I just use pin 21 because of the convenience and the location it is um, having to solder onto it it was at the end right in the over here so that was pretty easy I just soldered onto the speedwino and connected it to the plug and for the oil pressure and the fuel pressure you're going to have to get a 5 volt pressure sensor so that also works with the calibration some uh, sensors use resistances you can't use that with speedwino you have to get one of the 5 volt sensors now for the pressure sensor you're also going to accessories you're going to fuel and oil pressure I'm just have a fuel pressure sensor right now so I just set it on enabled I connected my ECU to the A15 pin so for my board I just connected it to the A15 pin the A15 pin sits right here so it's pretty easy to connect to and I just ran a wire straight from here to my external case plug and on the setting up of page I just clicked on A15 you could use any of these to get an analog input for any gauge that you want to add so I just use a 0 to 100 PSI since that's done and dusted the speed sensor output was a little bit um, was surprisingly good not having a shielded wiring all the way I think it's because of the lack of electrical interference around the wire which might not work in your case but graph you can see that there's the wheel speed sensor over here and it's the yellow line so as we can see I started off and it increases in speed as I go along this can be used this is obviously used for gear detection and well it works pretty good as you can see by this tail line it is on 50% smoothing factor I have the fuel pressure right here 54 um, PSI on the second graph you can see over here 54 PSI and that's about it